Right now we're just gonna add about probably 200 pounds. Sorry, Josh. We already had a bearing go out. That's pathetic in my opinion. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking the video. So this video is a little bit of a compilation of a couple different days worth of footage. I didn't want to make two 30 minute long videos, so that's kind of how we got here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually kind of proud of how we did on this upgrades, but what do you guys think? After you see the upgrades, what do you think in the comments down below? What do you think I should have done? What should I change right now? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And be sure to, while you're down there, hit that like button. Appreciate it. Alrighty guys, it is the next day. It's Saturday afternoon now, 60, de or not, probably not 60, probably 50, 55 degrees or so, nice and sunny. I'm over at my buddy Josh's house right now, or Josh's farm. They're in a dairy farm, and we're actually gonna be putting some weights on this disc. So right now we're just gonna add about probably 200 pounds of this disc. We're not gonna add a lot, just because I don't wanna overload this thing, but we're gonna set it up so that we can put more on if we want. So basically, he's got, he's a, he's a big, uh, Jockey's the wrong word, but he he runs around a lot of white parts for white and Oliver tractors. If you guys ever need white and Oliver tractors, head down to the Facebook uh, page that I'll link down below. But we're just gonna put two weights on and hold for the 200 pounds and see if it'll work. So Josh and I have been fabbing away. Basically, what the plan is of these weights, we're gonna use U bolts to keep it from moving front to back. Just U bolts right here. I'm gonna use two pieces of angle iron to sandwich it. And then basically the sandwiching basically lets us. Uh, if we ever want to add more weights, we can add more weights. And I think it'll work. We're almost done. I got almost got all the piece parts done. So we should be done here in the next probably half hour, 40 minutes or so if everything goes right. Alrighty guys, here's the finished product. Sorry I didn't get you guys much footage doing this. A, we kind of got rushed for time. We had a lot of people coming in and out and it was really windy. But here it is. Wheel weight, I angle iron, angle iron, two ready rods or threaded rods that are just sucked down together. And it gave us plenty of room to basically for everyone to add more weights. Sweet. Taking the disc home. I'll let you guys know. I'll do the walk around when I get there. Sorry, Josh. Alrighty, guys. So I'll go ahead and explain what we did to our disc. So, like I said, the main root problem that we ran into last year was that this disc just was not cutting through kind of the grassy food plot that we had. Card to this video right here, you guys can see it, but the only remedy to that was just to go fast, eight mile an hour or so, and that was, that the disc was able to work well. So my thought is, if we had more weight, more down pressure on the disc, it'll be able to get, kind of stay in there, and instead of rising up on the grass, it'll stay down in there, dig and churn and burn the dirt. So. What we did was my buddy Josh, who's like I said, a white and Oliver tractor kind of parts jockey, for lack of a better term, he has a bunch of old tractor wheel weights. And what we did was they're about 100, 125 pounds a piece, slap two of them on there just to try out. We're gonna try just two wheel weights for right now, but I wanted to design the system so that we can throw more wheel weights on there when we need it. So here's what we did. Basically we had two U-bolts on the frame right here and here. And that basically keeps the keeps it from moving side to side and really just moving anywhere in this plane because for example you can kind of see it's a circle that inner diameter of that wheel weight so if we have the u-bolts kind of pushed to the front and back as much as possible that basically locks it in and then we just took two piece of angle iron on the top and bottom and then two ready rods threaded rods whatever you want to call them and smashed it together and that basically took a sandwich and took away all six degrees of freedom. Because in an engineering standpoint, guys, degrees of freedom is basically your degrees of motion. Because you can translate this way, translate this way, translate this way, and you can rotate around those three axes too. So rotate this way, rotate this way, or rotate this way. So with this design, I took away all six degrees of freedom. The U-bolts basically take away your translation this way resting on the tube takes away the translation this way so now we just got to worry about rotation when we clamp down it, we take away rotation like this by resting on the tube we take away rotation like this when we clamp down and clamp it to the tube and then obviously it can't rotate like this because of the u-bolts so that's how we took away all six degrees of freedom that's more or less a kind of intro engineering terminology speak so that's what we did for these two 
So I'm really curious to see how this is gonna work. We're gonna try it this spring for sure. We got some disc projects that we wanna do. We're just gonna, I, I think we might have to add a little bit more weight, but we'll see. One design I don't like is the ready rod. I took it, put as little ready rod as possible on the bottom just to have us as much thread up top. But the downside of that is it's a lot to thread out if I wanna put some more weights on there. But that is what it is. We'll, we'll approach that when we get when it comes to that. But so if we really if we wanted to put more weights on, unbolt this, unbolt this, take the angle iron off, probably ratchet strap the bottom angle iron so the rods stay the same. Then heave ho another one onto there, and you can stack probably another three or four more if you really wanted to. So yeah, all right, let's go ahead and let's. I'm thinking I'm gonna back the disc right in here just because it's pretty muddy. I can't back it in where it was just with the truck. Oh yeah, got some. Uh, shuttles for uh, a project I'm also working on for this spring as well. You guys have to stay tuned for that. Any guess on what I'm going to be using that for though? Uh, let's go ahead and try and not fail and back this in there. Now I'm going to block the wheels and unhook it, put the jack down and call our day. Sweet. There we are. Disc is back home and it's ready for use. We are ready for the 20, 2021 spring season up here at the Bellevue Farm. We have our brand new to us MX-10 John Deere double spindle 10 foot rotary mower. Card right here to that video when we pick that up. We have our disc. We have our new Holland T6 155. We are ready for spring guys. It is just around the corner. I got some plans and some stuff for tomorrow that I'm actually going to be out in the fields. You guys can't wait for that. That'll be a video in two or three days from now. The snow is just about gone. Fields are drying out. It's, oh, it's getting close to, uh, getting close to being uh, almost time to get in the fields with field work. So anyway, I'm going to close this video out. I'm going to head home, go grab some ribs and head to Davenport probably. Well, guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. And today, Sunday morning, I just got off the church up here at the farm at 845, 850. Church was very quick this morning. It was like a half hour. I am going to go ahead. I brought some stuff from the uh, previous video card to that right here where I picked up uh, two shuttles from my buddy Josh. He bought for me, and we fixed up our disc. So you guys want to check that video out. But I got some special projects uh, for these shuttles and shuttle cages. Basically, these used to be chemical shuttles, and then they, the tops were cut open. It was used to sort recycling, and they weren't used anymore, so I bought them for cheap. So yeah, we're gonna. I got a special project for them. Any guesses down below? It has something to do with the spring. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take that big, long, 12-foot long tube out, put it in our scrap pile, take those two shuttles out, hopefully with the skid loader if I can, because it's they're decently heavy and bulky to carry with one person. And then I'm going to go ahead, fill up the truck with gas, fill up the side-by-side -side with gas, and then we're gonna go ahead up to Bellevue and start mapping GPS fields. Mapping GPS fields was some of the smartest things that we've ever done on the farm. And I'm gonna explain more on why that is in a little bit. So go ahead and open this thing up. Curtis is off feeding cattle this morning. They're gonna do one load of bu one bunch before church. They're gonna do butches. It's a bigger one. So Pat's gonna come help him. And I'm, like I said, gonna fill this thing up with fuel or gas, fill the uh, side by side with gas, hook this thing up to the flatbed, get the side by side on the flatbed, and head up to Bellevue. Let's go. Ooh, I don't think I made the turn. Idiot. All right, now time to see my trailer backing up skills. See if I can hook onto this thing first try. Survey says, oh, looking good. Mm, need to go this way. Let's try it, see how I look. Ooh, I think she'll go. I'm a little bit too far this way, but I think she'll go. We'll find out. Only one way to know if it slides in, which it is. Man, I'm good. All right, let's get this thing hooked up and head over. Hooked up and ready to go. 
All right, let's go. I gotta, might have to put air in that back right tire again. And then let's go get the side by side out. Put these ramps down. All right, now let's do an inspection of the side by side, kick tires. Get rid of this trash. Front one might need a little bit, but let's go air up that front tire and get moving. Fill this unit up with some gas. Alrighty, so before I head to Bellevue, Pat asked me to uh, go ahead and finish cleaning off the outside of the bowl rack. We don't have a ton left of it. It'd probably only take me like 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. But we have some really bad news. Um, yeah, wheel bearing went out on this Val Metal AM450. Yeah, this thing is not even a year old. So I believe card right here when we actually got this new skid loader. Here, or there, I'm not sure. Feeder wagon, I should say. But yeah, it is not even a year old and the wheel bearing went out. That's not good. Like, that. So for something that new and for something that's supposed to last 20 years and for something that only goes maybe four miles a day, maybe... Yeah, we're just very disappointed that we had that early of a failure. But live and learn, I guess, or live and move on. Already, this thing's barely a couple years old. So that's what's happened, basically. Yeah, we noticed we had oil leaking, popped the cap off, and yep. She done. Trash. And the crap thing is, we gotta go all the way up to Wisconsin. Needless to say, we're not too happy about that. What do you do? So we cattle need to be fed and our other feeder wagon is down at the uh, south farm. So we can't use that. What do you do, I guess? All right, let's start cleaning. All right, this farmer owned farmer ran bull rack is for sale. It is all washed up and it has made its final run on Hartung Family Farms. We're looking to just get a bigger one. It's more or less a spread axle one just so we can haul a little bit more. But it's a 90s ish. We've owned this thing for a long time, at least 10 years, 10 to 15. It's a 50 foot long Merritt uh, bull rack, tandem axle, tires are good. It's all pretty dang in pretty dang nice condition we've only used it for 20 to 22 loads a year and every load is about 150 miles or so so there's really not a ton of mileage on this unit so if you guys are interested email me down below shoot me an offer so right here's a part where i cut the video um it's actually going to be in tuesday's video so we're going to jump jump ahead a little bit and i want to talk about the feeder wagon that is still kind of upsetting what happened there i lied earlier this uh mineral wagon this uh feeder wagon is barely a year old i believe i don't even think it's a year old we already had a bearing go out that's pathetic in my opinion oh well but here's how uh here's how basically the wheel works you have a solid shaft that's got a couple tapers and then you stick a bearing on here that's actually what spins this shaft doesn't spin you have a bearing which is essentially what a bearing is it's got a inner diameter that goes on this shaft backs up against this bump then it's got a bunch of balls that the ball bearings on them that spin and then the outer is will be attached to uh the tire so yeah that's kind of a, a nutshell how that works but all right now i'm heading out see you and now we'll hear a few words from my dad on a couple days later and he'll give you guys a little bit of an update on our cattle and our calves and there's some pretty cute ones he gets to see you got the bud bay on here from jackson county iowa you know it's beautiful not much snow left over there at sundown or uh chestnut i mean anyway today is thursday i took a day of vacation I'm gonna head down to the farm help out with chores a little bit as you can see it's kind of gloomy it's supposed to rain a little bit today this afternoon but it's about 8 15 now so we'll head down to the farm look at that little cabbie little white face a couple black faces they're the twins hey my job is to start cleaning this stuff out and throwing it out the door we're down at pat's place a little cabbie here a little cabbie hi hi that's what we're gonna do we're gonna try to clean some of this stuff out Got my dreaded pitchfork, and the key to this is while you clean, can't let no cows back in here. So that could be kind of difficult, but we're going to see what we can do. Good mamas. Well, we got three of them. 
As you can see, I stripped down two layers. I'm down to a t-shirt. And I got about not quite half of it done. So I'm sweating. It's about five to six inches deep. Somewhere it's eight. But we're getting it slowly but surely. So again, guys, I apologize for this being kind of a jumbled video, but I, I, I'm trying to keep my videos around that 22 minutes, no more than that. So like I said, that's why I'm kind of jumbling these up. But do you guys, are you guys okay with this style of video? Let me know in the comments down below. And just a quick update on the farm. It is almost, as I'm recording this, it is Saturday the 27th. There's no snow out there. We're getting a lot of rain. We got, we got an inch last night or so. So it's a little sloppy, but next week looks dry. Cross the fingers by next Thursday, we're going to be in the field. So you guys are going to want to hit that subscribe button. We are just getting going. It is going to be an exciting year. We got a lot of new things coming and we just bought two different things. You'll see in the coming videos, you'll see on Thursday, but be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Two new things coming to the farm along with some other surprises I got coming. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Why am I doing the outro? Kick it to past around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartung Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. God bless. Stay safe. Have a good one.